Hello, and welcome back to another episode of 8-Bit Monsters Monster Deconstruction for D&D 5th Edition. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at the Feathergale Knight. Now, this knight is actually found from the Princes of Apocalypse module. This particular monster may not be commonly found in other campaign settings, especially custom campaign ones. This particular monster is a CR1, giving us 200 XP. And on top of that, this is our first spellcaster we're going to be looking at. Another thing to note is that the Feathergale Knight also wears a special type of armor called Wingwear Armor. Now this doesn't actually do anything in particular or special that we need to worry about adding into the OCR or the DCR for our monster. But it's good to know that sometimes our monsters are wearing different types of armor that it could be affecting the overall value of our monster. Another thing I'd like to note is that whenever I'm doing encounter building, I like to look back at Xanathar's Guide. In there, they have a great set of tables that helps me build encounters very quickly. Why am I referencing this, you may ask? Well, it's because when we look at levels 1 to 3, we'll notice a, a very interesting thing for players to monster ratio. For instance, since this is a CR1 monster, if our players were to encounter it, we would roughly need about five players in order to be able to handle one CR1 monster, for instance, this Feathergale Knight. As our players level up, we'll also be able to notice a drop in the need for players against the same CR1 monster. In this case, at level 2, we would only need three players to be able to face off against the Feathergale Knight at CR1. And finally, at level 3, we would roughly need about two players per every one CR1. This makes the encounter building a lot easier, plus it, it gives somewhat of a challenging combat experience for our players when we use the Xanathar's Guide, rather than the original way to calculate XP from the Dungeon Master's Guide. If we continue to look at the chart for encounter building in Xanathar's, and we look down to level 4, we'll notice that when we get to CR1 monsters, the ratio is 1 to 1. This means that our players aren't even equivalent to a CR1 monster until they've hit level 4. So the same thing can be done if we go back and look at level 1 players and see that they're equivalent to a CR1 quarter monster. It's kind of sad when you think about it. Anyways, let's move on to the skills and traits. Thankfully, there's nothing too crazy to have to worry about in this section of the monster. There are no skills to worth noting here, so we'll just skip right over that, even though it has animal handling and one other skill. The only other thing we need to worry about is spellcasting. And when we take a look at the spells, all we really need to look at here are damaging spells. We don't even take into consideration any other types of spells that may be controlling. With that in mind, we only see that there's only one type of spell that does damage, and it's Ray of Frost, which we'll take a note of in the OCR section. Moving on to the DCR, we take a look at the Wingale Knight and see that it has an effective hit points of 33, which is calculated from the 6d8 plus 6 hit points that it gets. Since there's nothing else to modify with the hit points, we move on to the armor class. The Wingale Knight is wearing scale mail, and the fact that there's nothing else modifying the DCR here, the effective AC is a 16. Let's apply the effective hit points of 33 to the chart, and find that the hit points are rated at a CR 1 8th. Next, we note that the effective AC of our Wingale Knight here is 16. Comparing that to the expected rate of 13, that's a plus 3. Because it's only two variables over, we find that the monster's AC is actually three points greater than the expected number. Therefore, we need to shift the DCR up by plus one because the difference in armor class is three. Dividing it by two gives us one and a half. We only move it up that one extra point. So our DCR shifts from one eighth to one quarter. Now we get to look at the OCR, and this is where things are going to take a little while because we have so many different types of attacks that the Wingale Knight can be using. Because the Wingale Knight actually has spell casting, let's take a look at the Ray of Frost spell. Now this Wing Knight can only use the Ray of Frost once per round, so that makes things a little easier here. And when we look at the damage, on average it's dealing 5 points of damage from its 1d10 per round. That's not a great amount of damage, at only 5 damage per round. Let's move on to the next weapon. It's also carrying a longsword that it can use at one-handed or two-handed. At one-handed, 
the longsword will be dealing 6 damage on average, times 2 attacks per round because of multi-attack. Now this equals out to 12 damage when we look at the numbers here. And actually, the longsword will be dealing 13 points of damage per round, which I'll discuss in the notes section later on. Now let's take a look at the longsword when we hold it two-handed. At two-handed, the Wingale Knight will be dealing 7 points of damage per round, totaling to 14, but actually 15. The next weapon it's also holding is a spear, which can also be held at one-handed or two-handed. At one-handed, it'll be dealing 5 points of damage times 2 attacks per round, equaling 10, but actually 11. And lastly, the spear can be held at two-handed, dealing 6 points of damage times 2 times per round, totaling to 12 points of damage, but actually 13. It's very important to make sure we take those points of damage in the parentheses and apply that to the OCR. Again, I'll let you know in the notes why this is so important. Looking at the effective attack bonus, we find that the Wingale Knight has a plus 4 on all of its attacks. If you're wondering where the plus 4 comes from, it's plus 2 for proficiency, and since these aren't finesse weapons, it's also plus 2 from the strength bonus. And since there is nothing affecting the attack bonus at all from any of its traits, the Wingale Knight has a plus 4 for its attack bonus. Now we can take all these numbers and apply it to the chart to find our OCR. Now obviously, our DM is going to be using the highest amount of damage possible to damage our players. So which weapon is the DM going to use? Clearly, we're going to use the longsword at two-handed, totaling out to actually 15 points of damage per round, on average. So applying the 15 to our chart, we find that the OCR is actually a CR2 ranking. Now, this is also falls in line with the attack bonus, and we don't need to shift the OCR around whatsoever. Our final value for the OCR is actually a CR2. And that's, again, here we go. We have quite a heavy hitting monster, monster, and extremely low defenses. We have a DCR of one quarter and an OCR of two. This is really imbalanced in terms of hit points to attack damage. Let's move on and take a look at the final combat rating. To calculate our combat rating, we do as we always do, and we take our DCR, add it to our OCR, and get a final value. So in this case, we're taking one quarter, adding it to two, which totals two and one quarter. We divide that in half because of the two numbers, and we get one and one eighth. We then round down or round up to the closest CR value, which in this case is a CR1. That's the printed value of our Wingale Knight, a CR1. Sure enough, the printed value is correct. And when we get into the notes section, I'll explain why I have those numbers in the parentheses, because it's actually really important. Moving on to notes. The first note I have is about the spellcasting. It's pretty important when we are developing our monster to note only the damaging spells. We don't worry about anything that's going to alter the character's minds, or make friends, it has to be doing damage. The other thing we could take into account is if the monster is using mage armor or any way of modifying their armor class as well. Basically, you just keep on the lookout for anything that's going to modify the combat effectiveness of the monster, be it hit points, armor class, damage, or attack bonus. And in other cases, the difficulty check as well. Now, here's the point in the notes that I wanted to make about the dice and why the damage was in parentheses. Normally, when you look at the average damage, you're seeing just the full value, but what you're not seeing is the rounded down decimal point. In the Dungeon Master's Guide, it tells you to take half the die value and add in a half value as well. So, a d12 is actually dealing six and a half points of damage, a d10 is dealing five and a half points of damage, a d8 is dealing four and a half, and so on. You just take half the value plus half a number, and you've got the actual value. I bring this up as a point because when I was initially calculating the final value of our Wingale Knight, I was finding it to have an OCR of 1, not 2, which was expected to be to bring us to an, a final value of 1. It took me a little bit to find out what was going on here and why I wasn't getting the printed value of the Wingale Knight. I was close, but I couldn't quite get it. And then it hit me. 
I wasn't adding in the half damage on all the dice because it was getting two attacks per round. Once I did that with the longsword at two-handed, I was getting seven and a half damage per attack, and since the Wingale Knight can make two melee attacks, seven and a half times two is 15. That's why it's important to remember that half damage. They don't show it in the books, but it's something that needs to be kept in mind. And that's how I ended up getting the OCR of two, bringing the final value to a one. Another point to keep in mind is when you have weapons that can be used one-handed versus two-handed, and if the character has a shield. If in the armor section of the monster stats at the top, it says chainmail and shield, then that character is using a shield and can only swing its long sword or its spear or whatever versatile weapon at one-handed. You'll need to remember to drop the shield, reduce the AC by two, to swing the weapon at two-handed, which can drastically change the overall value of the monster since it's already rated with the shield in mind. So my final thought, is it balanced? Yes, the monster is perfectly balanced and we were able to find the printed CR value of one. Is it fair? I don't think so. This monster is hitting as hard as a CR two, but it has the hit points of a CR one quarter. We're playing this game again of hitting extremely hard, but having no hit points to withstand the damage from the players. So there's really no actual combat. This is why when I like to create my monsters, I try to make them as balanced as possible where if I'm making a CR3 monster, I want the damage to be an OCR of three and I want the defense to be a DCR of three. That way I don't have to worry about, okay, am I too high, am I too low? It's just, there it is. But anyways, I digress. The Wingale Knight is properly balanced. It can be used in any areas that a culty wind elemental cult should be used or wherever you want Wingale Knights. Who knows, they don't have to be part of a cult and they can just be there. In any event, I hope you enjoyed another episode of 8-Bit Monsters Monster Deconstruction and I hope to see you again in the next episode. Until next time, when we deconstruct another monster from D&D 5th Edition, take care everyone, and I'll see you next time.